I must say, I must uh, say something. When I got this invitation, I felt uh, kind of intimidated because I would say that uh, I feel here I'm like kind of the weird guy, and for two reasons, and I have both reasons in my hand. First of all, because believe it or not, I still use a BlackBerry. It has, come on, not that much. It has Android on it, but it has a physical keyboard because I love to touch stuff. I love physical stuff. And the second one, because, you know, I'm a professor at IE Business School and also I'm an entrepreneur, but we're not intern experts. We don't do ups, we do chewing gums. So that's why I'm the weird guy. But let's say, you know, am I that weird? I would say not that much. I come from a very traditional family. My dad has been a corporate lawyer for his entire life while my mom has been a physical education teacher. So, I mean, something very traditional, something very simple, who could have I been? Believe it or not, I've been a professional athlete for about 20 years of my life. So I've been uh, standing on the edge of the platforms like these, from 10 meters, and doing you know, flips and twists in the air. After that, I've been in the military. Yes, I was a lieutenant of the Carabinieri, which are the Italian military police. And I've been training and coaching military platoons to go to peacekeeping operation in Kosovo and Albania, already back in the days, unfortunately. And then after that, you know, I joined the university in Italy, and I got a degree in political sciences. Yes, I dreamt to be a diplomat. But then after that, I ended up like this, you know, with such a huge question mark, because I would say that lots of people, you know, at the end passed through this phase. But thanks for me, I, I have a great and disruptive experience. Um, I joined, you know, I would say the, the easy path. I joined, you know, different med tech, med medical, uh, medical device, uh, pharmaceutical and biotech companies doing in, uh, marketing, HR, and international business development, and I got the chance to travel the world in more than 60 countries. I was happy and glad that I could able to network, to build up an international network since, thanks for me, I'm, I'm fluent in five different languages. After that, you know, I would say everything looked pretty smooth. I could have kept in the corporate world, but I did not. And my most disruptive experience was surely doing, you know, an MBA back uh, at Thai Business School back in 2007. And as you can imagine, I was, was one of the top students of my graduation. And if you think that, you are completely, absolutely wrong. I was one of those B, B minus students, nothing special. And thanks to that, you know, while I was doing my MBA, I joined something which is a program within the business school where I studied, which is called Venture Lab. It's like a laboratory for entrepreneurs where you, like in this place, you pitch your idea, and then you get the chance that other students join you and you set up a company and you set up a startup. And after that, I'm very glad to introduce you what has been my fantastic failure. I know it sounds weird, you know, fantastic on one side and failure on the other side, they don't get along well together. That was a kind of, a, let's say, the, the Facebook for wine passionates, trying to connect wine passionates, wine producers, restaurants, wholesalers, and so on. What have I learned? I say fantastic failure because you cannot imagine how many things I've learned. And I've learned something else which is, uh, comes actually from uh, the Chinese language, saying there are loads and loads and loads of opportunities, even in difficult times, like, for example, the one we have been facing over the last few years. But let me tell you a little bit about how everything started. As said, I've been uh, in uh, traveling the world a lot, and as, as, you, can exp as you can imagine, you know, while you've, you're tired, you're jet-lagged, you feel very tired. And at the end, maybe you might happen like these little kids, that you need caffeine, you need, you know, any other, like, uh, coffee, sodas, and energy drinks in general. And, but, uh, that I was using those, uh, those, those substances. But a while back ago, I was in Hong Kong, I had a very busy agenda, and I had to take about three taxis in an hour. I realized something strange, that I, I felt it was strange. All the three taxi drivers were chewing gums. I got a little curious, and I wanted to understand if there was a social habit, a coincidence, or something else. Did a few research and realized that there are clinical studies proving that the act of chewing helps people to stay awake. And imagine that there are also other clinical studies say that if me and Bill are driving two separate cars, and Bill is chewing a gum, 
Bill would react to any external stimulus faster than me. We identified a global problem, which is surely sleepiness behind your will. Can I ask you, how many of you here, raise your hands, how many of you have felt sleepy once in a lifetime while driving? Okay, I would say pretty much. So the idea was to set up a company and to start developing and using chewing gums as delivery means of active ingredients. We launched basically Drive Gum, the first caffeinated chewing gum to help drivers and not only to stay awake, alert and concentrated. I anticipated before, I'm sorry, we don't do ups. But uh, what I always teach during my class at IE Business School is that if you don't know something, you must look for somebody who knows it. And I've worked in pharma, in medical device, in biotech. I have no idea, I had no idea about confectionery. And what we did, one of the founders of the company is a guy who has been working 25 years distributing international brands of confectionery. But, you know, you say, come on, you said us, you, you're going to talk about networking, but where does it, when does it start? Actually, being honest, I would have never imagined that, that the guy I just mentioned you, which is extremely professional in confectionery, was actually the dad of my synchro partner in diving. What, why happened that? We were basically training on the edge of the platform, and I was, I was listening to him about his, his dad experience, and I said, that's that's great, you know, he might be the guy I'm looking for, and he was actually one of the founders of our company. Actually, what I would like to underline, and I'm sure if you're all here, you understand this, it's networking is key. But what is networking? That's the biggest question. I would like to, to show you something, which is, uh, let's start with what networking is not. I say excuse in advance to any British people, don't take it personal, but this guy is British, but I think it's a brilliant video. Take a look, please. Okay, you might find this very funny, but believe it or not, most of the people think that networking is that thing. And please forget it. There's nothing about to do with networking. And other people think that the larger, the better. People think that having like 10,000 friends on Facebook or 5,000 connections on LinkedIn, that's key for networking. And there are even other people who are like collect, of having so many business cards they could start trading them like the football stickers we used to do that in Italy, you know, when you have many stickers with the football players, you exchange them. But that's absolutely not networking, because the biggest issue here, if I have a large network, I have to maintain it alive. And that's the toughest part. It's not just about building it, it's about maintaining it alive. Again, like networking is like any other relationship. Net relationships are design aren't designed for selfish individuals. It's always better to be in credit rather than being in debit. So think about what you can offer to your network. You're not asking for something. You're basically offering them an opportunity. It's basically the same thing, just see it from the opposite side. Just flip the coin. And there are also other people, like the, the, the funny British guy, who's just about pitching himself. Me, 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 and me. And that's what most of the people do it. It's absolutely incredible. You have to say the first thing you should do is to listen, think, 
and then talk. Because you could always fine tune your pitch, understand what your network is needing, and maybe you have one pitch in your mind, but you can fine tune it. You can really hit the target and offer your network what they're exactly looking for. Be a fast thinker. Adapt yourself while you're knowing your network. And also, I would say something. I would say, you know, as uh, Bill here, of course, is a great communicator, talking a lot. I know that some people might be shy. And if you're shy, building to network is kind of difficult. And sometimes people tend to stay within your circle of friends, within your circle of acquaintances, people you know. But think, if you're shy, you can always use your circle of friends to help. They will help you to expand your network, to to introduce you to other people. That's very important. That's a limit, but no, if you, we, we do find people who are shy. So you must start building your network effectively right now. And probably, if you're here, you definitely have this basic uh, inf information. Believe it or not, there are people who say, you know what, I'm, I'm too busy. I know I have lots of stuff, I lots of work. I have my kids, my wife, my husband, whatever. But nobody's too busy. You, have to, you must set in your daily and weekly agenda networking opportunities, networking activities. Those are fundamental. And believe it or not, it will, stay, it will take time. It's going to take a while because maybe if I'm meeting a, a person, he, I might not have the opportunity for him at the right time, but I have to track, to keep track of this person, of this contact, because the opportunities might might come in the near future. But how do you build your network? That's very important. There are three aspects. You know a person, you're liked, and you're trusted. Because if you're not trusted, you can be liked, but at the end, you will not effectively use your network. These are three fundamental things that must coexist within your network. Another thing, you have to show interest. You have to be empathetic. That's fundamental. And uh, Bill, may I ask you something? Where, where did you study? Uh, Boston University. But you got an MBA or something? Uh, from University of Connecticut. OK. University of Connecticut is where Ray Allen is from, right? Yes. And you have a great uh, basketball team, no? Women, male and female, right? Very good, yes. Actually, to be honest, I met Bill literally five minutes ago. I knew exactly he studied at that university. I'm Italian, so we're more likely to like football rather than basketball. And I have no idea who Ray Allen was. But why am I doing this? I've basically connected with him. We have connected. And I'm sure that uh, uh, if in a year I will try to contact him again, he will remember I'm the weird Italian guy who knew about basketball. But honestly, I don't know shit about basketball. You understand, you always have to be professional in whatever you do. You even have to Google your potential network. Connect, create a connection while you'll be remembered in the future. And another thing, you know, I know you've met a lot of people, you exchange a lot of business cards, and you'll have maybe, you know, already 10, 20, 40 in your pockets. But what is key for networking is to follow up. Follow up is fundamental because if you connect one, if you contact again a person in one year, he will not remember you. He have, will have no freaking idea about who you are. So you have to follow up quickly, but not too quickly because sometimes there are people who think that networking is about stalking people. So careful about that again. And you have to be professional. I was impressed the other day that I saw an app who were doing talking about business cards. Believe it or not. I've scanned all the business cards of all the people I've met in my entire life. And I will definitely write down that Bill has studied at the University of Connecticut because I know that in the near future, I would like to connect with him again. I know exactly how to create empathy, how to really connect. You can use business card scanner, you can use apps. They're a great tool, use it, invest your time. It's, a lot. it's tough, but you have to keep track of them. Because people think that networking is about to connect. I'm sorry, you have to, I must disagree on that. Networking is way more about reconnect. It's not important how, when you meet a person, it's important why you will reconnect with that person. But how you do reconnect? 
Basically, this uh, little database I have, I basically wrote some notes, as I said before, about who this guy was and how I might be able to reconnect and maybe to create empathy again and remember him on which occasion we met. Luckily, you know, we are in, the, in this era, you know, we have lots of social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, and many others. So it's quite easy to keep in touch, to keep in touch with the people. But remember, people think now that just a message on WhatsApp is enough. Guys, use your phone, call people, email them, uh, wish them happy birthday. Remember to stay connected to the people. But, you know, here, till now, I've told you about, you know, what, uh, what networking is about. I would like to tell you exactly my achievement through, thanks to an effective networking. I was working for a little multinational, for a little company, a little pharmaceutical company in Italy, and Marco was the, the general director of that company. He left the company a few months ago. He put me in touch with a leading executive search firm. And thanks to that executive search firm, Mega HR, I found a job in the biggest, one of the biggest Italian multinational pharmaceutical company. He said, OK, nice story. Yeah, that happens. Things could have, could have ended there. But that would have not been enough. Because again, I, I moved to Spain. I got another interview with another Ellison Partners, another executive search firm. And actually, I stayed in touch with the other executive search firm company. They said, Nazareno, you know what? So we're trying to set up an international uh, network of executive search firm around the world. I put them in touch, and they set up Agile More Wide, which is one of the biggest network of executive search firm, especially in biotech and pharma. Why did I do it? Did I get any money from it? No. I know that they will always remember me. And the same thing I've done with these big network of people, I've put them in touch with the talent and careers department of my business school because they'll have candidates and the other people are looking for candidates. Do I get any money about that? Oh, not really. But just that's what about networking. People will remember you. Again, when I was doing my MBA, I was so passionate about cars. Automotive factor for me was amazing. And uh, do you think that a guy coming from biotech, pharma, and medical device can ever get into automotive industry? I would say that just uh, doing the typical click, applying online to look for a job, I'm not likely to find any job in automotive. Luckily, thanks to the alumni association of my business school, I was able to connect with Guy Porsche. I understood how shitty was a salary in automotive compared to pharma pharmaceutical. Then I said I gave up, and I said, no, I won't, I won't go. I won't work for the automotive industry, but that's another story. And again, one of our major clients in Spain is BP, British Petroleum. They have many gas stations in, uh, in Spain. How I got them? I was a small company. I, we are still a small company with DriveGum. I knew he was attending an event. I knew exactly who he was. I started showing interest in his company. And he said, Nazareno, what do you do? That's how we got BP as a major client. And last but not least, I'm talking about networking. People think that you connect and things happen. But here I have a few uh, uh, screenshots. This was an email I've sent on the 14th of November in 2014, while I tried to connect with Autogrill, a major multinational company who have um, convenience stores along highways and motorways. I've tried to send email to them, contact them for about a year. Once I got the luck to attend an event in this beautiful building, which is the Spanish embassy, the Italian embassy in Spain. I got in touch with the people of the embassy and didn't ask them anything, just presented myself. And he said, you know what? I think you have a brilliant idea, a brilliant product. We'll pitch you in touch with Autogrill. And this, we, got, we signed the contract on the 12th of April, 2016, which means about around 15 months after. So perseverance is key in whatever you're doing. But what is more key, guys, I really want to underline this because the time is about to end, is uh, to be passionate. To be passionate in whatever you're doing. But being passionate as every day is day one. That's the key. You connect with people if they see passion in your eyes. You have a different light. My last piece of advice is how do I understand if I'm passionate or not? I understand it when I'm, uh, I go to bed and I look forward to wake up the day after doing exactly the same thing. Thank you very much.